Jon Stewart discussed his 2021 segment on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, in which Stewart defended the lab leak theory. Uh, here's the clip of Stewart from 2021. I think we owe a great debt of gratitude to science. Science has, in many ways, helped ease uh, the suffering of this pandemic, uh, which was more than likely caused by science. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's kind of. Hold on, was that? No, 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 no. no. Now, listen, listen. I, it's I'm, coffee. I wouldn't I'm, do that. To you. I wouldn't for, do that to you. I'm so all what, for what do you? Takes, but, but what do you? What, 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 what do you mean by? Do you mean like oh, so this was, perhaps a, was, there's, there was a chance that this was created in a lab? There's an investigation. A chance? Well, but, I, so, I, 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 oh my if God! If there's evidence, I'd love to hear it. There's I just don't a know. novel respiratory coronavirus overtaking Wuhan, China. What do we do? Oh, you know who we could ask? The Wuhan novel respiratory coronavirus <laughs> lab. <laughs> now on his podcast, Jon Stewart talks about the backlash that arose from his bit with Colbert. Let's watch. It was a pretty good bit that expressed kind of how I felt. And the two things that came out of it were I'm racist against Asian people and how dare I align myself with the alt-right? I was doing a bit about, and it was similar to a bit I've done on religion. I used to do a bit about religion, saying religion's giving comfort to a world torn apart by religion. So the idea was, uh, you know, about the vaccines and other things that science had uh, truly helped heal a world from a pandemic, uh, probably called by science. And then I proceeded to go on a kind of a long tangent about why that, why I thought that. Um, and the backlash was swift, uh, immediate, and yes, uh, quite loud. He's right. Look, wow. it, it was based John Stewart back then. I mean, around the time he was talking about it in 2021, the world had opened up to talking about it more. But it was still quite stigmatizing. And to talk about it with that level of kind of confidence on a platform as high and as kind of liberal as the... Like I don't the think Colbert show. was act, was uh, was uh, acting when he looked genuinely panic-stricken. Yes. <laughs> like, he joked, he joked that we're not recording anymore, by the way. <laughs> you know, which was reflecting the level of caution you had to take yes. uh, with asserting that. And you know what else he said? Col Colbert also said, oh, I, I genuinely just don't know. Tell me what the evidence is to support your position, which I think is, is a, a good way for Colbert to go. I, I'm not criticizing him for that, but it is also very telling that he genuinely was probably very unfamiliar with the evidence that supported lab leak theory at the time. Because it wasn't a public conversation about no. here's the evidence for, here's the evidence, evidence, evidence against, make up your mind. It was very much, there is no evidence for lab leak other than that you're right. anti-Chinese. Right, oh my God. It was, um, yeah, so I've always liked Jon Stewart, uh, or had some affection for him. I don't agree with every monologue he's ever gone on, or every cause he's advocated, but I, you know, I respect the, uh, the bold, truth-telling perspective he brought to the Iraq war debate uh, in, in the aughts. That was, I think, a very useful perspective to be aired every, every day, pushing back on a bipartisan uh, dogmatism about the necessity of our interventions in Iraq and Afghanistan that he ended up being completely right about, 100 percent correct, the concerns that he was raising. And there were good faith concerns yeah. that this was not worth it, that we are going to destabilize this region, we're going to create unprecedented suffering, in the, we're not going to make things better, and we're going to make things, in fact, worse for ourselves. That was, that it, was, it was a relief to have someone in the news commentary position sharing that perspective, which turned out to be completely right. Absolutely. Which now most people concede was correct. Absolutely. It's not actually controversial now to say that it was correct. It was correct. Right. And look, that's why we all, I mean, many of us fell in love with Jon Stewart back in the early aughts. It was the Bush era. It felt overwhelming. And he was this voice of reason. And that's why the show became so popular. Now, since then, you know, things have taken a bit of a turn. We covered earlier, or I guess it was last year now, uh, that interview he did with Condoleezza Rice and Hillary Clinton. Remember that? Where there was so little pushback Please against some of their <laughs> foreign policy Why would ratings. you do this? I'm sorry. I'm I sorry. Did, but... I did blank that one. Yeah. yeah look, so good. he is the one who has a history of showing more in, inside and introspective, mm -hmm. uh, introspection than a lot of people and being genuinely interested in why people who don't agree with him feel the way that they do and has had a willingness to engage one-on-one -on -one with them in an interview format that can be very revealing and very useful. Um, so credit where credit's due. Everybody everybody has their, mm -hmm. their mess-ups. I don't know. Yeah.
But it, it's, uh, and, and you know, he's talking about the, the blowback he got, and again, accusing him of anti-Chinese racism. It, like, that's something that the, the purveyors of the mainstream narrative, which is, has collapsed by now, are, are going to have to reckon with, that they, they took people like Jon Stewart and, and maybe unintentionally, what, I don't know, they, they were pushing him into the, in an alt-right camp. Yes. Say, like, that was very reckless. Yeah. Very reckless. And it's not an exaggeration to say they were doing that. I, there are CNN headline after CNN headline about how this is a racist conspiracy theory that originates from Trump. It's just so harmful yeah, to truth. Good, good people aren't going to want to be associated with no. that. They're going to instinct. I mean, they're going to instinctively want to keep their distance because of these like fairly, really broad, unhinged, unmoored uh, characterizations mm -hmm. of various belief structures. It's a real problem. But I will also say that part of why he's so successful there in that clip, even the clip from two thousand and one, is because he's funny. Yep. And you know, it used to be that during the height of the John Stewart era. Democrats, the broad left, would joke about how humorless the conservatives were. Mm -hmm. Fox News made some attempts at putting out their own versions of Jon Stewart that were not good. Um, and we really thought it was about the left. It was somehow about there was some relationship between the ability to be funny and uh, having what, a certain kind of belief system. Now that things Those have things are shifted clearly not somewhat, correlated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I'm not saying that I think all of the kind of Republican attempts at, are, at, at humor are as funny as maybe conservatives think that they are, but I do think that there is a kind of um, a lack of self seriousness at play in some of the conservative contexts where the Democrats have become more serious because I think they feel under threat and like there's no, mm -hmm. there's nothing, no, this is a laughing matter. And I don't know that that's to the benefit of Democrats. In fact, I just did a rewatch of uh, the show Girls, the HBO show Girls, which ran, I think, from like 2010, 9, 10-ish to 2017. And there's so many jokes in there that are jokes about the discomfort with changing norms and people who are gender non-conforming and the characters who see themselves as liberal and loving, uh, having struggling with these kinds of new changes in the world. And I was reflecting, like, this could be a conservative show. Like, this, yes. in terms of that sentiment, it's very much a conservative show. Brianna, get out of my head. <laughs> I made this argument like 10 years ago or whatever really? it was on. I'm, I, I loved that show. I, I loved Lena Dunham's creative work and so much not her her in public stuff. But yeah. her I think she's brilliant. I, I thought it was a great I show. I thought the show was great. And I actually I thought it often subtly advanced or played at a kind of conservative not like a hard well, no. right, but I, well, I think the difference is that she wasn't making fun of the idea of transness. She was making fun of kind of liberal hypocrisy mm -hmm. as though, you know, liberal people who are yeah. especially older are confused when they go to the coffee shop and someone's gender not conforming and they use the oh, wrong yeah, pronoun yeah, and they yeah. get yelled at and they're like, wait a minute, I was doing my best. You know, overreaches in different areas yeah. as things change. Well, and, and just more broadly, you know, the show, it, it showed the, the kind of sadness of a kind of, you know, liberal post-college experience and aimlessness. It was, it was introspective. I'll yes, it. And it I, was I, introspective. I, yes, I mean, I don't. I think that the it was a generational critique more than yeah. a liberal critique, and perhaps a neoliberal critique. Critique mm -hmm. because they were all struggling to get by in late stage capitalism. If girls were made today, right. they all would have been wearing "I Do Not Dream of Labor" T-shirts. They were and also they very. Bros. They were also very unsympathetic. <laughs> it, yes, you liked the characters, yes. but they were monstrous. Yes, they were. Ways. They were. Very and that's true of the male involved. characters as well. That's true of Adam Driver's character. They, they were driven by personal success, yeah. uh, ambition, climbing things that one might again yeah. associate with a critique of. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, but they didn't <laughs> view themselves capitalism. that way. Well, no, we didn't have that Liz. It was pre. It was pre Bernie. No one was really talking about it in those kinds of terms. But that, the the point is to say that I think that there we could all be benefited by that kind of analysis and that kind of approach and a kind of little bit of a levity injected back into the situation. Mm -hmm. And that's what John, John Stewart brings to the table and why I think he was so effective both in 2001 and today. Absolutely. All right, well, stay with us. We'll be back with more Rising after these messages.